Fact or fiction, you can get DNA from a stamps or a hair sample. Do you know the answer? Well, let's dive into it. Howdy, welcome to Family History Fanatics, where we love helping you climb your family tree and have fun along the way. If you're new to genetic genealogy, then chances are you have questions. Well, check out the link in our description below to the five most common questions we are asked about DNA. If you've taken a DNA test, you know you need to either spit in a test tube or swab your cheek. What is happening when you're doing that is you are putting some of the cells of your body into that sample. Those cells are either on that swab or they're contained in the spit that you put in the test tube. At the processing facilities, those cells are gathered up and they're multiplied in different ways so that we can get lots of copies of this DNA and that DNA is chopped up and it's looked at to determine different places along your DNA and what they are. But that's not the only place that you can get DNA. If you've watched any crime shows and you know when you go to a crime scene, then they are doing different things to gather evidence. They may find a hair here or they may find something else that somebody had discarded, a can or a coffee cup or a cigarette. And from this, they go to the lab and in 20 minutes or five minutes for that matter, they have a DNA analysis and they know who the suspect is and now they gotta go and find that suspect. Well, DNA processing isn't that fast, but you can get DNA from just about anything that cells fall onto. So think about for a second, yourself. You're made up of all these cells your hair, your eyes, your tongue, your hands. We already mentioned that spit has different cells from our body in it. Your blood has cells. All these things have cells, which means there's the possibility of getting some DNA from those samples. So where do you leave stuff? Well, if you smoke a cigarette, it's coming in contact with your lips and there's going to be some skin cells. Likewise, it's also gonna become in contact with saliva. And so there's gonna be some bits of saliva on that as well. It's also in contact with your fingers. And so some of the cells from your fingers are going to be deposited on that. If you drink from a cup, again, same thing. Once again, you're depositing cells on there. If you get cut and you put a Band-Aid on it, well, there's gonna be some of that blood that is going to seep into that bandage, and when you throw it away, that bandage still has some of your DNA. Even just walking around, you're losing your hair. You may not realize it, but we all are. Now, it's not huge clumps of hair falling out, but there's little bits of hair that are falling out every now and then, and if you happen to brush your hair or you rub your head against something, there's going to be a few follicles of hair or so that are stripped away from your head, and that is leaving different DNA all around. So what about things like licking a stamp or hair samples from our ancestors? Up until about 10 years ago, licking stamps was a common thing for our letters. And in fact, for the last hundred years, people that are writing letters were licking stamps and putting them on envelopes. Likewise, saving hair samples, a lock of hair, or I actually have a whole braid of hair from one of my um, great, great grandmothers. These were um, tokens that people saved to help remember their ancestors by. So can we get DNA from these artifacts today? And the answer is yes, sort of. When we're thinking about a DNA test, we're usually thinking about ancestry DNA, 23andMe, my heritage, or living DNA, or family tree DNA, where we get this nice, good sample. Now, the reason why it's a good sample is because it's very controlled. In other words, they have a test tube with preservative in it, we spit a certain amount into it, or we swab our cheeks enough times that there's plenty of cells to be able to actually look at that DNA. Furthermore, we are living and so our cells are being replaced all the time. And so the DNA that we're actually giving in these samples has not been degraded at all. It's basically almost pristine. You, if you actually went to the labs and spit right there for them, that's really the only way it's gonna be any better. On the other hand, 
DNA from our ancestors in the form of stamps or hair or any other artifact for that matter has gone through some environmental changes. Depending on how it was stored, it may have been seeing a lot of heat and humidity or it may have been seeing different extremes in temperatures and this tends to start to degrade DNA. Likewise, just the fact that the DNA has been deposited and it is no longer with that living human, it's not being regenerated. And so it starts to degrade. Now, after about, you know, a few hundred years, most of the DNA is going to be all gone for, or, you know, good conditions. Now, if you have excellent conditions of preservation, you might be able to have DNA be preserved for longer than that. If you have worse conditions, you could have that DNA be degraded much faster than that. So it really depends on these artifacts, what has happened to them over the years. What DNA they're able to pull out of it is only going to be a fraction of what we're used to with the DNA testing companies. And it's specialized companies that do this artifact DNA restoration. The other problem with this DNA restoration, and particularly when we're looking at stamps, envelopes, things like that, is who does that DNA belong to? For instance, if I have a letter from my great grandmother and it has a stamp on it and maybe it was even licked and sealed, we can test that and see if there was some DNA and maybe there is some DNA that can be recovered from that. And if that's the case, that's great. Now it's not gonna be, like I said, a full sample of DNA like we normally have, but a little is better than nothing at all. I now have the next problem. Whose DNA was that? Was it my grandmother who licked the stamp and licked the envelope? Or maybe it was my grandmother's daughter or my great grandmother's daughter who loved to lick stamps and envelopes. And so my great grandmother always had her. Maybe it was somebody else who did the licking of the stamp and the envelope. The DNA from the artifact is not going to tell us that. And so you'd actually have to have, you know, let's say a half a dozen letters from your great grandmother and test all of them to say, okay, all of these were done by the same person. All of these were written in different places and all of them were done in different times of her life. So what is the likelihood that one other person besides your grandmother, great grandmother, was the person who actually licked all those stamps and all those envelopes is very slim. Unfortunately, because of the cost of that, that would really just be prohibitive to actually test six different letters from your great grandmother just to determine whether or not that fraction of a DNA that you get is from your great grandmother. Now, locks of hair is something else that is interesting because the locks of your hair, you're probably only going to be able to get mitochondrial DNA because it's actually cut off. On the other hand, if you have hair that's been pulled out by its root and you still have the follicle right on the end of it, you might be able to get some autosomal DNA from that. But again, over time, these things degrade and you shouldn't ever expect to get a large DNA profile from any of these artifacts. Should you go and start testing your letters and any hair samples that you may have? Unless you have a lot of money to spend, I would say probably not. Your money is probably better spent elsewhere. But if you've exhausted everything and you want to go and step into this and you have the money to spend, then by all means do that. Just again, remember, you're not going to get a full sample like you would get from the companies, but what you get is certainly better than nothing. So artifact testing is something that is here. It is something that is probably going to become more widespread, although I wouldn't expect it to be near as widespread as normal DNA testing. Now, if you would like to learn more about where we get DNA from, why don't you watch this video up here? And if you'd like to learn something else, then you can watch this video right down below.